Hey everyone, Itai Manero here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I painted all these cool characters, using every brush included in my paint and chill brush set for Procreate. So let's jump right into it. As I already mentioned, I'm going to be using my paint and chill brush set for Procreate. You can find it along with a free mini version for you to try out on my Gumroad page through the link in the description below. The intention of this video is to go through all the 42 brushes in this set, painting one little character with each brush, while I talk about the characteristics and possibilities of each brush. We'll go in order, so if you have the full set already, feel free to follow along. You can see what brush I'm using at all times, by looking at this rectangle right here. The first brush in the list is Flowing Sketch. The main purpose of this brush is to use it to lay down a sketch of your subject with lines before starting to paint. But it is more than that, because as you can see, it is perfectly possible to paint and mix colors with it. It can still be rough when painting, so I think the name of Flowing Sketch fits this brush pretty well. Dry paint has a similar texture to the Flowing Sketch, but its purpose is more for direct painting. The fact that it doesn't have any wet properties makes it perfect for defining clean edges using it with the eraser tool, while leaving a little bit of a rough texture. Once you have defined the main shape of whatever you want to paint, blocking the alpha in the layer will allow you to paint inside the shape without leaving the defined area. Have in mind that I'm going to be doing this technique for all the brushes, even if I don't mention it, because I don't want to get repetitive. Wet paint is a version of the dry paint brush, but with wet properties. It is great for painting with colors that mix together more easily, at the same time that you are adding colors. By the way, another thing that I'm going to be doing all the time is to switch between the paint, the smudge and the eraser tools, but always using the same brush, so make sure to check this part of the screen, if you want to know which of the tools I'm using through this video. Soft Blender is a brush that normally I would use just for blending colors when using other brushes, but let's see what can we do with it alone. You can see how I'm defining the big shape with the help of the eraser tool. Then with the alpha lock activated, I can start defining the volumes inside the shape. Using a very small size with this brush will still allow me to define some finer details if I need to, like the legs, eyes and eyebrows in this character. Cinnamon is a very painterly and fun brush. It has a nice shape and opacity control. You can use it with the smudge tool to blend colors and shapes effortlessly. I really like how rough and painterly the brush strokes can look with this brush. Cream is a different variation of the cinnamon brush. The transitions in the colors when using different pressure levels of opacity are more so. This also happens when using the smudge tool with this brush. If you want a little bit of a soft and mushy look, this is your brush. Bubblegum is another variation from the previous brushes. The fun thing about this one in particular is that it starts soft but some really grainy texture starts to appear when you press harder with the Apple Pencil. Have in mind that this brush specifically can't be used with the smudge tool. Because of its properties, it will generate weird colors if you do it. I try to make most of my brushes compatible with the smudge tool but sometimes it's impossible because then you would lose other properties. It is still easy enough to blend colors with this brush, just by controlling the opacity with pressure while painting.
Afternoon coffee is a variation of the bubblegum brush that doesn't start soft. It directly goes from one color to the other with a hard grainy texture. It reminded me of the texture that grounded coffee has, that's where the name came from. This brush works great with the smudge tool, allowing you to soften some of that hard grain in some areas. Custard is a really wet and dense brush. It blends colors very nicely, and it works really good with the smudge tool as well. Square Cloud is a very cloudy brush, with some interesting edges in the strokes. It is great to define shapes with a very rough texture in the outline, and then use it to paint really soft gradients of colors inside the shape. Lowering the size of this brush will also allow you to paint finer details. Sea Waves brings a weird and interesting texture that can look very painterly and playful once applied to your illustrations. It is a little hard to define the main shapes directly with this brush, so you probably would want to do that with another brush first, and then use this one to introduce the texture. For the sake of this video, I did my best here with this sausage character, and I think it turned out cool enough. Dangerous Cloud is a perfect brush for painting all kinds of painterly clouds, fog or smoke. I'm going to paint a little smoke character to demonstrate what I mean. It is very easy to define a cloudy shape with this brush, and then paint in a color gradient inside, with the same brush and alpha lock. Unreal Path is a very painterly rake brush. It is amazing for adding controlled lines along your shapes, to add this really cool texture, and it works fantastically with the smudge or the eraser tools. Deviant is one of my favorite brushes in this set. It is a very wet brush, that lets you really feel the wetness dispersing when you apply low pressure when painting your strokes, and it gets less wet when you press harder. I also love its pretty unique texture. The Express Texturizer is a good brush if you want to quickly add some strong texture to some areas of your illustrations. I'm going to paint a cactus character to show what I mean. I think this texture could be used for many purposes such as painting water, or foam, or tree leaves. It may even have some furry vibes if you think about it. It has some automatic color dynamic variations too. Mythical Foliage is a brush that I made thinking on using it for painting foliage specifically. The color dynamics and the shape in this brush really work great for that task. I'm not painting a tree here though, but I'm sure you get the point by looking at the texture and colors it is creating. Old wet sponge gives a similar texture to using an old and half ripped sponge to apply watercolor on paper. I'm painting a bubble character here, and because it is a little difficult to define edges with this brush, to better define the rounded shape, I'm going to use the selection tool to cut those edges away, for a cleaner look. Broken Crayon is a pretty self-explanatory name. The texture in this brush reminds me of a broken crayon that gives you this really rough and unpredictable texture when painting. It's a very strong texture, it doesn't mix the colors with each other, and I think that can lead to a very graphic style of painting. Smoothie is another of my favorite brushes in this set. I love how this brush feels when painting. It can look fairly simple, 
It is a very smooth brush with almost no texture, but the way the colors blend with this brush makes it perfect for a more classic digital painting experience without trying to reach for any realistic textures or media. Volcano is a brush with a grainy texture, similar to ground or the very thin texture of soft rocks. If you want to apply a soft but still noticeable texture to your paintings, this could be a good choice. Sketch on canvas has a similar purpose as the flowing sketch brush, but it has a canvas texture to it. It is also a bit multi-purpose, because you can use it to sketch with smaller sizes, or to paint directly with bigger sizes. It also can be used to blend colors with the smudge tool, without losing that nice canvas texture. Wet canvas is a variation of the sketch on canvas, but more focused on the painting stage. You can really get painterly and playful with the canvas texture in this brush. Brown sugar is a very fun rake brush, that has a peculiar color dynamic feature and blending capabilities. Great for texturizing with a texture made out of lines, and small color variations. Cane sugar is basically the same as the brown sugar brush, but with thinner and more separated lines from each other in the strokes. River Lane is a liquid-like brush, very soft and mushy, good for painting stuff without too much texture, but yet some personality. Silk is yet another rake brush, but this time with only three thick lines in the stroke, and with a silky feel when using it with the smudge tool, great for mixing colors in a delicate way. Croco is the third of my favorite brushes in this set. Its texture is made out of a nice cardboard texture I took from a real cardboard box and it translated to the brush very nicely. I think the granular texture in this brush is pretty unique, and it's the perfect texture to add to children book illustrations or something similar. Fluff is a brush with nice blending capabilities, and very easy to use for shape building, thanks to the clean strokes you can get when using it with the eraser tool. Its smooth but cloudy texture also helps to build up the volumes inside your shapes. Cotton bristles is a variation of the fluff brush. It's basically the same, but with a different shape source that will give you a slightly different outcome. Autumn Ground is a pretty cool brush, that adds this texture similar to little stones that could also look like little bubbles. I'm going to use it here to make a jar with beer, where I think those tiny bubble dots can give this character a nice touch. Kids paint for some reason has always reminded me to that paint made for kids, to paint directly with their fingers on paper. I think it is because the edges of the strokes remind me of the finger touches with the paint stains. It's a playful brush, and I think it can be used for achieving a very picturesque style.
summer sand is named after the real thing. I literally used a picture I took of sand and manipulated it to make the texture for this brush. It's a good brush for painting sand but also other similar fine textures. The next three brushes, Thick Salt, Deep Mist, and Sponge, are great for adding different types of grain and textures, but because of their nature, it's a bit hard to use them to define shapes and edges. That's why you can see me use here the selection tool to get those main shapes locked first, and then use the brushes to add colors and textures. And for the last 7 brushes, I'm going to bring some of the previous characters I've already painted to showcase how these brushes work. Each of these brushes is going to give you a different graphic element to place in your paintings for a very graphic outcome. Think of these brushes as a nice touch to give to your illustrations for a similar look to the Into the Spider-Verse movie, where all kinds of screen tones and graphic elements were mixed with the painterly style of the characters and backgrounds. Well, this is it for this video, I hope you liked it, and that you can have it as a useful reference when using the paint and chill brush set. Don't forget to subscribe for more art related videos, and give me a thumbs up. Also make sure to check out my Gumroad page, where you will find the paint and chill brush set for Procreate, and many other sets that I have available, I'm sure something will suit your artistic needs. All the links are in the description below. Ok, thank you for watching, see you next time.